super close. So what is going on you guys? Welcome to today's video. In the last video you guys saw, we finished the air ride setup on the Mark IV and she's officially bagged. And currently the car sits pretty nice. We're calling this the V1 setup, but we've got some adjustments I wanna make. So looking at the front of the car, the driver's side sits a little bit lower than the passenger side because this fender has already been rolled. You can see it tucks that portion of the tire up inside there. And then on this side, because again, the fender hasn't been rolled yet, this side's a little bit higher because it's actually hitting on here because there's a flat lip back there. So we need to roll this fender and that'll drop this side down a little bit more. We'll drop that side as well. So hopefully I want to get the fender to like right above the lip of the wheel. I don't want to actually touch it, but like right here where we're aiming for. And then in the back of the car, when I first got these wheels, I wasn't sure if the 10Y was going to fit. So I actually bought smaller 20 millimeter adapters instead of the 30s, but it turned out the 30s and being static just worked perfectly. But we do have... 20 millimeter adapters to go onto the back of the car, which will bring this in another 10 millimeter, which should get us either right on top of here or tucking just like. We'll have to see what it actually does, but I don't want to add any more camber to the back of the car. And I could probably shave the tire a little bit and have this pop down, but we don't want to do that either. So we're going to test fit these smaller adapters. If it happens, I might go to like a 25 if I need a little bit more out. But at least for today, we'll go ahead and toss the 20 millimeters on in the rear and see how our fitment looks afterwards all right back wheels off let's get a quick little visual check back here make sure nothing's pinching nothing's hitting everything looks to be good to go so that's all set good so now our third can come off we'll swap on our 20 and uh do a little test fit now mind you this side of the car the passenger side had maybe two or three millimeters less than the other side of the car a lot of times like i said yesterday um cars with a solid rear beam it shifts left to right a little tiny bit it's not like drastic but in this case that side has maybe two three millimeters more poke than this side does so the fitment will be a little bit different but for the most part it's not too drastic all right there is our thick boy 30 next to our 20 so obviously 10 millimeter difference and actually just for fun push it this way I still have these ones, the even thicker boys, the 40s. Bam. 40, 30, 20. So this is our, our go-to. Hopefully this uh, gets us all looking right. All right, so on the passenger rear, 20 millimeter adapter is on and it is close back there. With the 30, we had plenty of room, but if we look under here now, look how close it is right there between the little guard here but there's about hmm, three there's a couple millimeter not a lot but there's a couple it is actually touching the little cover on um, that's back here in front of the uh, the shock tower but obviously that's not gonna do anything it's just plastic it's barely touching that but the rest of it spins and moves no problem so we'll have to see where it sits aired out. Like I said, I might need a 25 millimeter back here. Um, just instead of going 10 in, only go five in. We'll see how it airs out or it actually sits, but it's close. The front super close, the rear super close. This is definitely the max I can go um, with these wheels going in. All right, we're back on the ground. This is our rear fitment with the 20 millimeter in. Kind of sits under a bit. Like I said, it's probably gonna tuck now more than likely. We'll have to see once it actually aired out. I might go to a 25, but we'll test this out first and see what we get. So we're gonna air out nice and slow. Ooh. All right, we're not all the way out yet. Oh, that's spot on. Oh, that is spot like. In the world of ET Perfect, that is, that is it. Fender, lip, identical placement. Oh, that's nice. So this was the a bit, a little bit wider side. Let me check this side first before I go all the way out. Ooh, yeah, that's what we wanted. Oh yeah, that is definitely. Oh, that's spicy. That's what we wanted. So when the car is aired up, it doesn't look quite as aggressive because in just a little bit, but once it's aired out, I mean, it's perfect. Like I said, I might be able to get away with a 25 mil adapter to push it out just a smidge more. But if not, 
Oh, that's good. Oh, that is good. Yep, no camber needed, no bigger stretch needed, just a slightly smaller adapter. We are sitting fantastic. I love that. I think I still have a few PSI left in the bag. Where are we at in the rears? Oh, well, it says zero, but there's still a little bit left in there. All right, that's all the way out. And honestly, like I said, perfect. We want to be just about to fender the lip, but not actually touching. Because if this drops, it actually hits that. Eventually, you tear up your quarter. But, I mean, that's it. That's that's pretty good. That's a textbook ET perfect. I do say so myself. Where it's all the way aired out. It's just about fender the lip, but we're not actually touching. No damage being caused. Oh, that's spicy. Dang, I like that. All right, so now the goal, roll the front passenger fender and hopefully have the front sit just like that. Have it tuck in just a little bit, have it sit like right about here and then just, mm. oh, that's, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. It was good before, but now it's like tucked in just a bit more spicy fitment. I'm about it. I am all about it. All right, let's go ahead and roll the front fender just a bit. And, uh, oh, so good. Look at that. Woo. Spicy. And for anyone who's going to ask, the final wheel spec for the rear of the car is 19 by 10 ET41 with a 225 35 tire. And this is, uh, what you get. Again, when the car was static, um, it was 1910 ET31. That extra little poke when the car was static worked perfectly. But now that it's bagged and the car's coming down more, uh, the ET41 is really where you want it to be. So again, 1910 ET41, there you go. All right, it is time for us to roll this front fender. If you look inside, you can see the flat little lip that sits right here. We're gonna roll it up a good ways, not perfectly flat, but just enough that we can get past the lip of the tire here. Now I do have a fender roller somewhere in there, but a lot of time with a fender roller, it puts too much pressure and you kind of like wave your fender and we really don't want to do that. So trust the amount, I've had this thing for probably 10 years at this point simple i'm gonna very slowly work it up and just slightly push 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 very slowly um we're not gonna buckle anything like that and like I said, it works it's an old school method but if you go slow this works perfectly i'll get my heat gun out heat up a bit more so don't crack any of the paint and then uh should be set i didn't film the process i apologize but no bacon fender at all so it's good to go and you can see up in there it's just rolled it was like flat like this and now it's about there just enough so we air out it's gonna slide past the tire versus slamming right into it. All right, moment of truth. Let's air this thing out and see how she sits. I also put a fair amount of tire shine, so hopefully it'll slide down nicely. I had to go slow in the rear. I wasn't sure it was going to pop over and actually hit. That looks pretty good. It came down a bit more on this side, but I think it might just be the fender liner holding it now. Yeah, it's just the fender liner. So on that side, um, it's pulling the fender liner through, but on this side, it's still hooked over here. I really didn't want to go through and have to cut it or remove it, but I think I'm gonna have to, because everything else is fitting fine. It's just, now we're just stuck to the plastic fender liner. If I want to drop any more. I mean, it's <laughs> it sits super low, but now the rear is a tad bit more than the front and it's gotta be even, you know? Ooh, the rear came down a lot more, oh my gosh. Oh, it's so close. Look at that. It's so close. That's terrifying, but that's fully aired out and it stops right there. Exactly what you want. We got to just get the front to drop a bit more. It's about half inch higher than the, uh, well, actually, well, because the rear has the rake and it pulls the wheel forward a little bit, this corner up here towards the front is very, very close, but dead center is 
I would say about about a half inch lower um, than the front. So a bit more adjusting to do with our fender liner, and I think we'll be uh we'll be perfect. This side's a bit lower, but you can see on this side the fender liner itself is actually getting pulled down over here, so that lets the car go down a little bit more. I don't know, we'll have to see. I really didn't want to have to like section the fender liner because the ballast for the HIDs sits right up here. I could probably go through and make a little box around it to get protected. Um, but you gotta be careful when there's electronics involved. You wanna soak with water. Florida, it rains a bunch. So we don't wanna ruin anything. But I'm happy with the rear. The rear is, the rear is perfect. Let's see if I out the front. All right, so the wheel off, looking inside here at our current fender liner situation, you can see right here, like from like there to there is where the tire is actually touching. I think what I'm gonna do is just cut like from here to like right here and just cut this very center section out. That way all this is still there, all of this is still here. I can make a little cover for the ballast that's back over there, but that way the car can air out and it'll sit up in this gap between um, this section and this section. That way it's not stopping right here anymore. That seems like a pretty decent idea. If not, if I mess up, I can always get another fender liner, not the end of the world. So I'm gonna cut this center section out just from right here to like right there, basically from like this point to like maybe that point. And that might be exactly enough that I need. Then the car airs out, it's up inside there and it's good to go. All right, so what I did is either gonna work or kind of at a dead end for right now. Instead of cutting it all the way out, you can see I cut a section from the back side. Here's that one bolt there. It's still holding all this up. I cut a section up to right about here. And same on this side, this bolt's still holding it up and I cut a section from here to right about there. So now when it pushes up, it's kind of like a relief and now all this can kind of flex on its own. You can see where it separates there more room to actually go up where it's not pulling all of this section and this can move kind of on its own the problem is if you look through here that silver piece that's right there that's the hid ballast it's hitting right there so pretty much from here to there is about all the room i have uh, which might be enough if the car comes down that extra like you know that might be 10 mil or so but that might be enough to have the front and the rear even and also i can go ahead and air up the rear a little bit to match the front of course but if the front can come down as much as the rear, that'd be perfect. Um, so I cut a little relief out of it, that might be enough, but if I wanna go lower, we're gonna have to move the HID ballast maybe further this way, out of the way, because the wiring's like right above this, and that little pinch wells up here as well, that people go through and actually flatten out, which I don't know if I wanna go do that much work, at least not today, um, but we'll try out this little relief cut in the fender liner. It's mostly still there. A little bit of water will go through for the most part that's in a case back there and again when i'm driving the car it's not aired out this is mostly sealed up it's not like a giant gaping hole right there so for the most part this is like the best of both worlds but again it's hitting the hid ballast right there which i don't know if the car is going up that high it may or may not be but we'll try this first on both sides see what happens and then i have to decide if i want to relocate the hid ballast uh smash up this pinch weld and kind of move some wire around that's a lot more work so let's see what happens and also going into this i know that mark fours in the front require a bit of work to have them go super super low but being on 19s i was hoping would save me a little bit and i wouldn't have to do quite as much work when you're on like 17s or 18s people have section subframes arthur to do control arms they add like three or four degrees of camber there's a lot more work that goes into it so i'm hoping with 19s i can get lucky with minimal work well since i'm i'm already here we're gonna do a little bit, just a smidge. You can see my little flap, little quick access. You can see the HID ballast right there. You can see the wiring for it, but you can see right here, this is the metal pinch weld a lot of people will flatten. So I'm gonna go ahead and bend this that way just a little bit, like from here to about there, the same size as my little cutout right here. Um, the wiring itself can push up a little bit and kind of compress. So I'm gonna bend this back just a little bit because I think we're actually hitting this in the middle of the tire. So besides making the cut of this, we'll bend this just a little bit and hopefully that's um, all work we gotta do today. Nothing to see here. Just uh, just the Mark IV things, you know? Okay, so from where it was to where it's at now, I would say it's up maybe five mil or so. So between 
this and smashing that up, hopefully. That's all we gotta do. And then look, after you're done working, it just clicks back into place. Super ideal. was just a little bit of light to spare and another beautiful Florida sunset. I present to you V2 of the wagon, rolled fenders in the front, smushed up pinch welds partially, uh, cut fender liner, and then 20 mil adapters in the rear, and the car is sitting so good. Um, this front right corner is still a little bit higher than the driver's side, but I think as I air out the car more, um, little by little, it'll start getting lower and lower, but I'm happy with it. The fitment, so good. I didn't go down all the way in the rear, so you can see if we had about a finger gap here. Same in the front, finger width right there, and then same all around. Finger width over here, and then last but not least, bam, the car is looking. And look at the back fitment. The rear fitment came out so good. Look at this. It's just spot on. Overall, beyond stoked with how good this came out. So now that the car is down and on the ground, let's get a new measurement from fender to ground and see where we're at. When the car was on the KWs, uh, the rear was just under 25 from fender to ground and the front was at 24 and like a quarter. So now let's see what we got with the air ride, center to fender. Let's see right there, like 22 and three quarters. Right there, just under 23. And then the rear to the center. This one is, well, to the center, this one is about 23 and a half. So the front's actually sitting lower than the rear, oddly enough, which the rear can go down more. The front over time will go down more, I think, as well. But not bad. Zero complaints. So 22 and three quarters in the front, uh, 23 and a half in the rear sit nice so overall had about a two inch drop front and rear like i said if i do more work it'll continue to go down further and further but as it currently sits stoked i know thinking about it it's a lot of work just to go down two more inches but like it really does make a world of difference and you have to keep in mind the biggest win in my eyes with air ride i can have the car this slow when it's time to drive somewhere we simply air up the car and we're good to go. Like I love seeing low cars and I applaud you if you're like a static warrior, but I'm not about the burning up my fenders, cracking oil pans, tearing out subframes. I've never been about just being that low. I like cars low, but I like cars usable, which is why this car on the KWs was low, but I had full lock left and right. I can still clear speed bumps, deep driveways, that kind of stuff. I don't like losing the usability factor of my vehicle, which is why the tank is tucked super low. I can use the entire back of the car. I can have a full car of people and I can just air up, don't have to worry about not being able to use my car anymore. So again, if you're a static warrior and your car is flat to the ground and you're daily driving it, literally props to you. I'm just not about that life. So for me, having the car bagged and sitting this slow for pictures, for shows, that kind of stuff is awesome. And then air it up, fully usable car, and we're good to go. And do not forget, tomorrow is Zero Night at Ace Cafe. It starts about 6 p.m. Make sure you guys come out. Again, it's getting bigger and bigger. And we love to see more people coming out. Do not forget, be thankful for every single day. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.